So let's take a look at something that's very, very basic, and that is the existence of space. Take a look at how the Torah looks at it and see what exactly science says about it and whether science is really accurate or not. According to the Sefer Yitzira, that's this book here, it was written down and formalized in the second century of the Common Era, after the destruction of the Temple. It was a set of exercises of meditation on Jewish uh, wisdom, the secret of the alphabet from which supposedly God created the world. And within this little treatise called the Sefer Yitzir, it's really, the book itself is really just several typewritten pages, six chapters in little pieces called Mishnas. And the secrets of the world supposedly lie there in that book. In one of the Mishnas, he talks about the six directions and that the six directions are the resultants of the six emotional characteristics through which God created the world, called Shisha Midos. The Sefer Yitzhira talks about ten spheres, two of which deal with time, Chachma Bina, to deal with the will and the power to create the world, which is called good and evil, good meaning the potential, evil meaning the actualization of the crass and the material that comes from the will. It's called Kesa Malchus, the mass, if you will, of the world. And then the six Midos cause the six sides of the cube of three dimensions. If you were to examine the context of the Sefi Yitzhira, you would have to say that time is created first because time is an extension of wisdom and understanding, Chachman Bina. Time is created before space. Then space is created and after space is created, Malchut, which is the last of the spheres, creates the material within the space. So that space is an independent existence outside of mass. This is the opinion of the Sefi Yitzhira. A long time ago, people struggled with this concept of space, where the space had an independent existence for mass. I know, simplistically put, I've been told, that according to Einstein, space is defined by mass, by the existence of things of mass and their separation, and that creates the space, that there is no other independent existence of space. The more things that are mass pull apart, the greater the space that will be there because this contains it. Because it's essentially the relationship between two existences of mass. Prior to the Big Bang, there was no such thing as space. Space is created when things of mass are first made and separated from each other. That's how I understand it. So space is really a function of the mass. There's no independent existence to space at all according to this idea. And in fact, there was a theory that there was an independent existence of space and that the materials of space, there was a very subtle material which was called ether. And that ether is non-existent has been supposedly proven by Mickelson Morley who ran their experiments and what they did was they tried to split off uh, a light wave into perpendicular directions, one going against or with the space, 
one going against the space or the ether and trying to determine if there was a difference between the light that went against the stream of space or not. And their um, result supposedly was that there is no difference. And in fact, the one that said that there is no difference, absolutely no difference in the speed of light of that which goes to the sides and that which goes forward, back and forth against the stream, uh, the one who said that was Professor Stephen Hawking. In a book written on time and space and black holes, the beginning of the book, he says, Mickelson Worley discovered that there's absolutely no difference between the light that goes forward and back and the light that's flashed by mirrors to the side and brought back. They absolutely come together exactly. Voila, there is no ether. That happens to be a lie. You see, there were numbers given for ether. And there was a supposed number that if ether existed, that the speed of the speed of light would be 30 kilometers per second less going against the ether than that which would not be going against the ether, would be going with the ether, or at least not in opposite direction to the ether. And that's what they were looking for. And since the numbers did not match 30, their conclusion was that there is no ether. However, if there is no ether, if there's nothing there in space, then the numbers should be exact. Hawking says the numbers are exact, but that's a lie. There is a professor, Stephen Sovolovsky, a colleague of mine, friend of mine, who wrote a paper outlining the fact that this is not true. And in fact, Einstein was aware of the discrepancies. You see, the Michelson-Morley experiment has been done over a million times under the greatest care, accounting for every possible reason why there should be a discrepancy to no avail. The numbers have been consistent throughout. There is a four to seven kilometers per second difference between the light that's sent this way and the light that goes back and forth which although does not equal to 30, which was the arbitrary number for ether, but there still is something out there that causes the light to be 4 to 7 kilometers per second slower. And that's pretty, a lot of, a lot of speed. 4 kilometers per second is 240 kilometers per minute. 60 times that is 14,400 uh, kilometers per hour. That's a lot. That's quite fast. That's approximately 9,000 miles an hour. At the high end, it's about 15,000. It's about 7 kilometers per second. It's already 420 kilometers per minute, which is an incredible speed. It's almost the speed at which one can go and break out of the Earth's orbit. 15,000 miles per hour, of course, is not enough. It has to be about 24 to 25,000 miles per hour. But that's the speed of an intercontinental ballistic missile. Incredibly. That's what happens. That's how much it slows down when you do michelson morley And so is there an ether? I don't know what ether is. But is there space that's independent of mass? You say no. But the experiment, done millions of times, says yes. What does the Seyfi Yitzira say? Seyfi Yitzira says that there is a space independent of mass. Now you decide. Who's telling the truth? And who are the real liars? Who is really educated? And who is really in the dark?